Yo, 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 it's your boy TTK and welcome back to another Pokemon video. Today is going to be a three part video discussing every single Pokemon in Sword. Uh, I was about to say Sword and Shield. Scarlet and Violet NU. NU just came out less than 24 hours ago and we're almost having all of our tiers ready for Generation 9. We're going to be getting PU next month and you guys know I'm definitely going to be making some PU content again. We're back in Gen 9. I, I'm not going to lie, Gen 8 PU was not it. At least like in its like last two years or like last year of you know being a current gen and i'm just like gen 9 p is gonna actually be interesting at least this early meta again who knows if dlc will come in the coming year or even next year but either way guys if you guys enjoyed this video please leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel for more content again we are back on to the consistency we're gonna try and get around you know the things that I haven't been doing recently so yeah we're gonna be starting off with this content now there's a lot of venue pokemon to discuss so obviously i'm gonna have to separate this video into three parts like i did for uh discussing like every fully of all pokemon in scarlet and violet you know that three part series i was doing uh before you know the games came out so we're gonna be doing something like that now of course there's a lot of venue pokemon to go through there's about 100 fully of all pokemon and obviously there are some nfes that you know would probably find viability in the tiers low as never used so yeah um we're gonna be going through this alphabetically and then obviously i'll put in the relevant nfes alphabetically when they're needed and obviously i'm not going to talk about every single nfe some of them are just going to be freaking garbage but uh some are actually going to be any viable so i'll discuss that when the time comes now the first one i want to talk about here is Ampharos. now i'm not going to lie to you guys like if we look at the pool of electrics yeah i'm not going to lie Ampharos isn't really shining above these guys like i'll probably use electros first or even like as a defensive electric i'll probably use electros first or even pink urchin because that has spikes and can self electric terrain and you could probably figure out something with uh you know pink urchin but Ampharos, i'm not gonna lie this thing has never really has anything going for it in the lower tiers i'm not gonna lie i mean i suppose you could try and pull off like an agility sweep and set with like terra ice but you have like Jolteon, which is just faster than this thing. Even like Jolteon's almost as fast as Ampharos with, uh, with an agility boost. You know what I'm saying? That is like, I, I don't know. I don't really think this one's going to be that good. But I suppose if you want to try and run it, I guess it still has Volt Switch for pivoting options. It still has T Wave, you know, static as an ability. It's just that its coverage is just kind of bad. <laughs> like, as an electric type, special electric type, like its coverage isn't really that good. I mean, Focus Blast and Dragon Pulse are decent enough, but like it's still just Ampharos at the end of the day. Like, when is this thing ever viable in any? Like, I'm sorry, even in a reduced decks, even last gen, when was Ampharos ever good in any? So, I'm not really expecting anything from this Pokemon again, to be honest. But yeah, uh, P, P you probably get Ampharos where it will actually be decent enough, supposedly. Like, it depends on what electrics we get in pu but if Ampharos drops the pu it'll probably be good to be honest but yeah on to appleton um appleton has not really shown like shown out to me in like the brokenness that we have in NU alpha right now like there isn't really much appeal to using this one not to say he's necessarily bad you could probably pull off something with appleton to be honest he's a defensive dragon type you know his typing is decent enough like he's a quad water resist with things like bruxish and Basculin running around particularly Basculin because you know that thing just terror waters and you know starts clicking wave crash but having a four times resist uh is pretty decent enough and you're also threatening now Basculin with like giga drain or apple acid or any of your grass moves to be honest so there's things like that and um yeah i mean it kind of hits hard but it's definitely not the premier dragon in the tier where you have pokemon like gudra and uh you know gudra is <laughs> like gudra cooks this thing i'm not gonna lie like gudra just clicks specs draco and appleton kind of dies and gudra is definitely one of the best pokemon in nu right now or potentially the best pokemon it's too hard to tell what the best pokemon is right now in uh 24 hour range but we'll, we'll find out soon that gudra is probably a top five pokemon and appleton just kind of gets folded by that so you know uh take that with a pinch of salt i suppose but not to say it's on mon status but again i don't really have any expectations for this like Ampharos and probably will drop to pu just because it won't get used that much uh bayonet bayonet is uh you know is bayonet like <laughs> who's expecting anything from this pokemon to be honest uh you know really bad defenses like it hits kind of hard <laughs> like i i like I'm sorry, but Shadow Claw isn't strong enough on a model with 115 attack. Like, the amount of physical breakers NU got 
with the water breakers like Bruxish and Basculin and also Zangus, even freaking Luxray. Like, I, I'm actually gonna try and rate Rux Luxray a little bit, even Braviary, Hunchcrow. Like, what is Bayonet offering to the table? Like, it, ghost types are in, you know, like they're in rarity when you get into the lower tiers of a reduced uh, Pokedex, but at the same time, you start Drift Blim, you start working with Sensu. Like, this one is probably last on the ghost list that you want to be using, even Haunter is a better ghost than this and like spin blocking i suppose is you know something that's decent to have on the team but bayonet is not you know doing anything for you i'm not gonna lie bayonet's gonna be pretty bad um i suppose if you really want to try and make bayonet work uh, what, what can you really do it's like you just go all out attacking so like maybe shadow claw knock off because it kept that uh sneak or sucker punch or even sd i think sd is something new to the move pool actually now that I think about it, SD is probably something to go on Gen 9. Uh, still don't think it's going to really do much in any. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Maybe in PU, uh, SD Bayonet will be something that's actually kind of scary. It really depends on what we get. But in any, I have no expectations for this either. Uh, Basculin. We're on to Basculin now. And Basculin is the GOAT, man. Like, honestly, I don't know how Basculin made it here. Like, it's this tier is, is scary, bro, in terms of physical uh, wall breakers that we have. And Basculin is definitely near the top. Because it has Wave Crash now, which is basically water type double edge. 120 base power a lot stronger than liquidation a lot stronger than waterfall and it has adaptability so what uh, 120 goes up to 240 and yeah you just tear a water and this one just kind of kills everything that isn't a uh you know a water immunity i'm not gonna lie like i'm not like quillfish quillfish like defensive water pokemon with intimidate still took like 40 like and that was like max defense it still took 40 and i was just like damn bro masculine is built different now obviously basking comes with the issues of lack of coverage on the physical side or like coverage that isn't really too relevant because like you do have crunch which is decent enough you do have psychic fangs which i do recommend because after facing like teams with toxic croak and that one being a water immunity i'm just like yeah you need psychic fangs to hit that thing and then obviously you can probably just take another water move because like wave crashes recoil and like if you're oko and things you're just taking a lot of recoil damage you obviously want aqua jet as well and i do think it comes with a full move slot syndrome like you could probably drop liquidation for you know maybe ice fang or crunch and it, it lost superpower which is a shame because like blowing up chansey which is also in this tier would have been nice to to see as well so that's quite unfortunate but wave crash terror water just cooks out anyway like who cares man who, who, who actually cares and i think the most important thing about basculin and then you is that the speed tier is actually pretty good you know because like let's look at any speed tiers real quick and um if we do it by descending order, Electrode, Jolteon at the top. Electrode is basically an unmon. Jolteon will actually be good. Uh, still don't. I'm still kind of fast on Dugtrio, but either way, like you still have mons that are like like post 100 speed and like you have like Jumpluff, Pyro, Zorak, uh, Life and Rock, which are all like probably decent Pokemon in the tier. And then like after that, at, that under base 100, Basculin is literally at the top, being faster than a lot of the offensive threats that NU has. Or career forms, Bruxish, you know, Squawker Billy, Zangus, Lilligant, Venomoth. The list goes on. Like every single other offensive Pokemon that isn't above 100 speed, Basculin is the fastest of them. So I'm really surprised that no one is talking about Basculin, even on any forums. It's a bit confusing. Like Bruxish does have dual stab on, you know, it does have Wave Crash Psychic Fangs and has stab on the Psychic Fangs. But, you know, Bruxish is slower than Basculin. Basculin has adaptability, so Wave Crash is hitting a lot harder than Bruxish could ever even hope for. So, yeah, I, I do think Basculin is one of Enya's best Pokemon. I, I hope it doesn't drop to PU because this one's just going to be ridiculous there. But, yeah, uh, that's it for Basculin. Uh, Bear Tick, on the other hand, yeah, again, I, I don't know, man. I don't really have any expectations for Bear Tick. Um, you know, it does have SD now which is actually a pretty cool option for it but it's a pokemon that requires weather to function especially in the lower tiers I, if it drops to pu might be decent enough but as a defensive ice type and it still does have terror potential but i, I think the power level then is way too high for this thing to actually be like good um you know the speed is really bad like you don't want to really waste your terror on bear tick when there's other pokemon that you would want to be terroring on your team and Obviously, Mono Ice defensive type is pretty ass. So, yeah, again, another Pokemon I don't really expect to do anything in NU, unfortunately. But if you really want to try and make Bear Tick work, I guess you just run, you know.
no icy rock smooth run through for the best but again vertex beta is still bad enough that like normal scarf is outspeed it like i think you get to like base 85 speed and above which we actually have a decent amount of in uh nu and vertex is just outsped like it's it's too inconsistent and outside of uh weather is not a really good mod uh, it's a shame really because vertex is my favorite ice type so it hurts me to you know speak about it like this but it is not that guy man it's not that guy braviary on the other hand this is going to be another nu staple a lot of people have been talking about braviary and uh what do you call it? It's a flying type. It has defog. You know, defog is pretty coveted in the lower tiers now because the, the like the closer we get to you know the lower tiers, like the less removal options we have. Because again, there's a reduced dex, and then all the other higher tiers that are you, you you take all of the good removal options. So yeah, having a Pokemon that has defog is pretty nice. Not to mention that Bravery actually just hits hard as as well. Has a decent speed tier. Uh, high attack stat has pretty much perfect coverage in what it needs you know it has brave bird it has close combat that, that's all it really needs like you never really need the normal move on braviary like in previous generations i guess it would run return but obviously you don't have return so i, I guess if you really want to run like body slam braviary but you don't honestly need normal stuff you can just go like u-turn and then like roost because it also kept roost as well so yeah this is typical this is like typical bra uh, braviary and it looks pretty good you'll probably want to fit defog somewhere if you want to use as a defogger uh probably over u-turn because I, I don't think you drop cc for any reason like we might have limited steals but just having the fighting and flying coverage is pretty strong in my opinion and yeah you just run heavy duty boots and braviary is a pretty good pokemon other than that um you know it's always been a decent scarf as well like it has the moves to be a pretty good scarfer like as long as you have u-turn and you can run choice scarf you'll always be a good choice scarfer i'm not gonna lie and uh yeah i'm i'm, I'm excited for bravery i think it's a pretty good pokemon uh in general and uh terror potential as well like anyone can terror i might as well just mention potential terror potential as a potential twice but uh yeah i guess you could go terror flying i suppose to boost brave bird but you know it's not a pokemon that you necessarily Certainly want to be Terran, but at the same time, it's just a consistent Pokemon at what it does, which is like defogging and being a decent scarfer. Bulk up sets exist as well, which could definitely, you know, see some usage with uh, Terra as well, Terra fighting. Uh, so you're not weak to rock type moves and you can just blast the steel types pretty easily so and lose your you know rocks weakness and electric weakness which uh are probably braviary's most annoying uh weaknesses right now and also like slap ice types too so there's that so braviary is a pretty solid pokemon um bruxish again a pretty good breaker a lot of people are really you know excited about bruxish because obviously bruxish is a pretty decently fast pokemon in nu also you know has a higher attack stat than basculin to be fair and also has strong dual psychic fangs which hits like a truck and you know the best uh you know thing about psychic fangs is it screens breaking ability and a lot of people are trying to run like morgrim screens right now so you know psychic fangs being able to destroy them is pretty solid as well also getting wave crash this generation as well really helps bruxish uh you know offensive capabilities go over the roof because liquidation isn't really a bad move per se but 85 base power versus 120 base power you can see that difference is insane and obviously uh bruxish does have some decent moves as well it has crunch that also gets strong dual boosted it also has jet as well and this is all you really need on this pokemon to be fair also has terra water potential wave crash to hit pretty hard as well obviously it hits weaker than basculin but overall like bruxish does hit harder than basculin on the non-stabber moves like crunch and uh you know and whatnot so yeah bruxish is definitely a good pokemon um if you don't want to run choice band i suppose there's like agility life orb which this thing gets which once it has an agility up nothing is really outspeeding bruxish to be fair and could definitely be a late game uh late game cleaner with a uh, terrestrialization um cool now we're going to be, be moving on to some of our nfes now and i want to talk about karko now i made my you know hatred for karko known back in the early gen uh, uh early gen 8 pu when uh pu alpha came out and we basically only had karkov like as like a, a removal option and then i guess i think we had vespa quinn back then but either way karkov was like our only spinner and i didn't really rate karkov too much because rock fire is an awful typing and no one's going to tell me otherwise especially with the fact that your spinner trying to remove you know rocks and spikes and you're weak to them you know you can't run boots on this thing because you need every light now 
Kako's, you know, stocks have gone up in Generation 9 because you can run, you know, defensive terrestrialization on defensive Pokemon like Kako where you can make this thing a water type. And obviously making this thing a water type is probably the best thing you could have asked for because, you know, Rock Fire, which comes from like about four weaknesses or two of them being called weaknesses to water and ground, you get rid of that and actually can threaten water and I mean, you resist water and obviously kind of threaten ground type Pokemon too. So yeah, I, I think Karko is going to be actually good in NU. Uh, a lot of people are saying it's going to find usage just because, you know, it has rocks, it has spikes, it has rapid spin. Like the utility on Karko is actually good. And I did appreciate the utility you had in Gen 8, but I just didn't think in practice it was that good because, you know, this thing was, you know, chipped down very easily, rocks, weakness, spikes you know um also like the defensive typing was not giving you any favors at all but with terror Karko doesn't really have to worry about any of that really like if you turn into a water type you obviously lose you know your ground weakness you lose your water weakness you also you know don't take you know 25 percent from rock so yeah Karko, uh, i'm impressed with it this generation and uh yeah it's a shame that we probably won't see this in pu because i'd actually you know eat my words and say oh guys i'm sorry about Karko. yeah like this mod is actually kind of cool so uh yeah is going to be good now on to captain uh yeah another spiker uh which we actually have a decent amount of spikers in uh you know any we have Coolfish, captain carco uh deli bird if you really want to count that there's probably some other ones i'm forgetting Cro uh frogadier even florigato to be honest but uh the real question is is captain better than florigato and i would say yes because captain has a pretty decent offensive presence to sucker punch and it's in a tier where the power level is low enough for it to actually kind of be interesting it has like trailblaze now as a grass stamp move to boost its speed and obviously captain's biggest speed for like the past five generations is obviously it's an offensive mon with without a speed tier and trailblaze kind of patches that issue like it's still freaking slow at the end of the day but plus one trailblaze still outspeeds that base 100 pokemon so like i suppose that's you know good enough for captain at this point and captain has always hit hard like the sucker punches coming from captain is insane now is this thing gonna be nu probably not like it's still captain at the end of the day but i'm excited to see how this one fares in pu because getting a you know hazard set like captain also with like you know you know offensive potential like it's even better now since it can boost its speed with trailblaze you know it has nasty plot it also just hits hard like captain has never been a pokemon that can't hit hard it's just that it's speed tier and defenses have let it down for generations now and i'm excited to see how it does there's also a water immunity in this tier so you know if you really want to be a stock gap to basculin braxish all of these other water type pokemon i guess captain can fill the niche but yeah i i don't think it's ultra bad in any but it, it, it will probably drop to p to be honest uh on to camera opt um <clears throat> camera opt's always a weird one because not to say this mon's ever bad but i just don't really see a reason to use it now obviously with defensive terror we don't have too many good rock type uh stealth rockers to be honest like come look at our options really like some of these are decent enough like couple roger is a steel type which uh, again just increases the stocks of that pokemon sandaconda is decent with glare it has good physical bulk um we have whisk cash too which has spikes now which is pretty cool as well but uh camera ops, what what really does camera ops offer to the table really like that's my question i mean we'll probably find out more as you know the the tier develops slightly over you know the the next coming weeks but at the same time i'm just like other than rocks like it's a decent rock i suppose and it also has solid rock as well which actually would work well with terror depending on what type you want to tear it into because just reducing super effective damage makes this thing's longevity a lot better because like camera ops has average bulk like it's not really a bulky pokemon but having solid rock does help it out a lot but yeah i, I don't know I, I don't think it's bad but I, again it doesn't really appeal to me to be fair um chansey now I, I we don't know how chansey made it i obviously blissey was used in our use so chansey obviously made it here but yeah um Ch chansey chansey man like charge it charge it to the game like this is chansey like every light natural cure this one is too fat whether or not is an unhealthy presence in the tier we'll see probably won't be again it's very hard to you know suspect test or even ban a defensive pokemon in any tier to be honest like you know 
people in like Gen 7 you, you tried to get rid of Quagsire or something or even Chansey I, I don't really remember the situation back then or even Gen 6 PU where Quagsire was banned for example like I don't think Chansey will get banned or suspect tested it's just going to be a very solid defensive Pokemon once the tier settles and people start realizing oh HO isn't exactly you know the top thing like when bulky offense teams or balance teams start coming to NU because it will eventually happen it's, it's, it's not about when it will happen it's not about if it will happen it's about when it will happen and uh you know chansey will be one of the best pokemon in the tier is as simple as that so um clawwitz um uh clawwitz is interesting um hits very hard we have a lot of water breakers that hit very hard it is a slow water breaker though so like obviously you need like support to get in with, like walk turn i think there's a decent amount of pivoting potential in nu that can easily get close to in and out and then you know it just starts clicking choice specs water pulse or you know any of its other coverage options like dragon pulse now dragon pulse is even better now because guja is in the tier and you easily just slam guja with that even even with guja's massive special defense start like you can't stop the mega launcher claw with so bro like if this thing drops to PU, probably banworthy. I'm not gonna lie. Like Clawitzer hits way too hard, and I don't think we'll have the defensive answers to reliably answer that in PU. But um, hopefully Clawitzer stays in uh, NU because Terra Water Water Pulse, yeesh, man, yeesh. The damage is insane. The damage is insane. But yeah, Clawitzer has always been a good breakup. You just need the proper support to really make it work. Uh, Copper Roger. Now we have limited amount of steals. Now why? Are steel is always so important in competitive Pokemon. Now, steel is the best defensive type in the game, no doubt about that. Three weaknesses with ten resistances, like it's solid defensively, and obviously that means a lot of common attacking types steel can resist. You know, steel resists. Um, damn, what does steel resist? Fairy bug. It resists ice. It resists uh, grass. Like a lot of decently strong attacking types, steel can handle, and uh, you know. This is what we're working with in, in NU right now, and I'm just like, damn, we're really in the gulag right now. I'm not gonna lie. So Copper Roger is definitely the like one of the top steals, at least defensively, or what it can offer. Like Copper Roger was also good in Gen 8 NU, from what I recall from playing that tier a little bit. And yeah, it has Stealth Rocks. It has you know Iron Head. Uh, which is sheer force boosted, so I think that ends up being strong. Is it stronger than Heavy Slam? My maths is awful. Uh, I, I think it is. I'm not gonna lie, 13, but I, I can't be bothered to do the maths. But Heavy Slam is slightly stronger, but Iron Head is obviously more consistent damage because not everything, not every Heavy Slam is 120 base power. But yeah, um, Copper Roger is a decent Pokemon. It, not even decent i think this is a good pokemon to be honest and uh yeah it's definitely one of the premier steals in the tier no way this drops to pu under any circumstance you also need like some of these guys to kind of handle Gudra right now um obviously an assault vest would fix that but you know if you run assault vest you can't go stealth rocks but there's how many other rockers in the tier you can run bro like just go av copper roger and you should be able to handle Gudra on paper you know not gonna lie but yeah um what is next uh let's talk about crocolore to be honest um now crocolore was seeing usage in ru a little bit not i'm not too sure that's just because of poke aim or not because he was making some ru videos of using crocolore and i don't know how much usage crocolore did see in ru whether it was close or was just kind of a niche option but either way i'm going to include it here obviously because if it was seeing usage in ru and like it was actually doing decently well why wouldn't it do decently well in NU the tier below so obviously what does Crocolo offer to the table it has heavier light so it's bulky and it has unaware so you know it pretty much checks you know things like um Lilligant pretty well checks Venom off to a certain extent uh, I, I mean yeah I mean Sludge Bomb uh will do decent damage depending on the investment but if you go like Spadef on this then you probably just handle Venom off pretty well Lilligant too but at the same time, the only issue with Crocolo is that, uh, I mean, it has recovery. I was about to say it does have recovery, it has recovery. But the only issue that it has is obviously you can't run boots like Skeledurge can. So obviously it's more vulnerable to hazards. So you kind of do need like some sort of removal option to support this Pokemon. And uh, again, removal options are quite limited, but definitely things that you can fit with Crocolo. But yeah, I don't know how good this one will be in NU, whether we'll see usage or not. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Crabominable, hmm. Crabominable. Now, it's a fighting type, and there's a lot of fighting type competition. You have Persimmon, you have Medicham, which are really good Pokemon in NU, and uh, 
like i'm saying really good pokemon like day one but like i've played about like you know 20 30 games i've also you know seen some people talk about it like room tours that have been hosted and obviously medicham and persimian are freaking good at any bro it's, it's medicham and persimian but yeah cr crab on the other hand it hits harder than well it doesn't hit harder than medicham but it hits harder than uh you know persimian but the the speed tier is too bad the, the speed tier is awful the defensive typing is a lot worse just because you get that ice typing uh you know added on but yeah i, I mean it could run a bulky set with like a salt vest potentially but uh that's probably more of a pu thing i'm not gonna lie i don't think crab even like stays in nu like there's just too much breaking power for it to reliably do much like Glowitzer is a slow wall breaker but actually has respectable bulk and you know a better defensive typing but Oh, a crabble ball on the other hand nah this one isn't going to be too good in my opinion so yeah it's a shame really because it does actually hit pretty hard um the dene i don't think the dene is the dene bro i'm gonna spend like five seconds on this it's bad don't use it it's gonna drop to pu next um we have delhi bird hmm delhi bird yeah next <laughs> delhi bird bad next um Driftblim, one of few ghost types, one of few defoggers. This thing is gonna get any usage, regardless. I, I think it's gonna get usage. Like the defensive stats are bad, obviously, but it has a massive HP stat, so that kind of you know assists with the bulk. Um, but yeah, being a spin blocker too, actually has decent bulk actually in a power level as low as never used. Um, even with things like basketball running around, like let's say you get rid of all those broken breakers, Driftblim probably still stays you know relevant enough. It has Strength Sap, it has Will O Wisp. Um, could run some potential wing concepts as well with Unburden for sure. Maybe like Electric Seed plus uh, you know uh, uh, you know Pink Urchin. That could potentially be a set that I could see working on Driftblim and uh, with like a calm mindset and boom, like that one just kind of swoops your entire team. So yeah, there's a lot to experiment with with Driftblim, but yeah, this one's definitely going to be good. Um, who else is in D? Uh, we have Dragonair. I'm going to talk about Dragonair for a sec because uh, pro no one has probably considered Terra Normal E-Speed yet on Dragonair, but uh, you know, can basically pull off what Dragonair does. And I think the power level is low enough for this to actually succeed it actually does have a decent attack style of 84 it has a decent speed tier too and obviously you can run every light with uh you know shed skin uh so you can ignore paralysis like 33 percent of the time so yeah and shed skin is a reliable enough ability to be honest it's bulkier it has good bulk can set up easy like you know outrage is pretty hard uh to know you know wall the only problem is that you know dragonair doesn't have you know fire punch to really harm like things like tinker tough which would definitely get in its way so at uh, one time you could say terra normal another time you could say terra file terra blast and uh you know that thing would kind of sweep but the the main appeal is obviously the terra normal e speed which is definitely really strong but it's just that you have like things hard in you like the steels which uh definitely you could get some support with like magneton or something because magneton's in this tier I think it reliably traps, you know, things like Tinker Tough and uh Roger to a certain extent. Nah, I mean, I think that's earthquake. But yeah, trapping Tinker Tough with Magneton is definitely something that should be considered. Uh, the Dunsparce. Um, a lot of people are saying this one's good. I, I can see why, to be honest. It's decently bulky. I'm not even going to say decently bulky. The bulk is good enough for any. Like, 125 HP with 80 defense and 70 pass for death. This is good enough for any. Uh, also has Roost for reliable recovery, it has Glare, it has, uh, you know, Body Slam or, you know, Body Slam to get that 60% paralysis if you feel like it. I think this one is pretty versatile, uh, like, damn versatile. Like, it has CM Boom Burst, like, Terranormal Boom Burst, with, it has agility even. I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I would go agility on this side. The Dunce Pass is actually pretty kind of cool, actually. Like, you go agility, uh, timid nature, this is faster than like scarf persimian again like onto like the captain situation with like or the other one i was talking about with base 65 speed the Ampharos. like this thing is a uh, scary bro like terra normal boom burst kind of just blows up everything and uh it does have ghost coverage with shadow ball so like it has a decent uh, uh special attack stat you could run like you know 
expert bowl any offensive item on this and like boom burst could go ham i'm not gonna lie i'm excited for the dunce pass this one should definitely stay at new to be honest i would not want to see this one in pu like it's actually pretty decent actually so yeah that's pretty fun uh dog trio okay dog trio um trapping is still legal uh, we haven't banned trapping just because Dugtrio has had like no impact in OU anyway for it or for trapping to really be that important. It is one of the fastest Pokemon in the tier, and I think trapping definitely would be something to consider somewhere down the line for sure. Like trapping has always been inherently uh, uncompetitive, and uh, you know, like especially in the like the lower tiers. But we'll see how Dugtrio works because like. If it didn't have trapping, like let's say a Runa Trap was banned, then I wouldn't really be too fussed about this Pokemon. Like it does have SD uh, to its move pool now, so it's actually kind of threatening uh, with its speed tier. But yeah, Dugtrio is definitely up in the air right now for me. We'll see how it operates uh, in the next weeks. Uh, Electros. Uh, Electros is pretty cool, actually. I don't know if it will stay NU, but I've been trying like an Assault Vest set because, you know, uh, Electros uh, has pivoting, it, it does have decent bulk with the Soul Vest and the coverage is good enough. It has Volt Switch, it has Flamethrower, it has Giga Drain to hit grounds. You could also like potentially Terra Grass because like if you Terra Grass then you can uh, you know ignore you know sleep moves and can actually handle something like Lilligan unless like it has pollen buff in its move pool. I can't remember if it does or not but yeah Soul Vest Electros like in Gen 7 PU probably does decent enough in NU whether or not if, whether or not we'll see enough usage, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it's a decent pick. Uh, Ice Q, I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, Ice Face is like, I don't know. It could be decent. It could be decent, but um, probably won't stay in you. Like, you probably, you, like, screens is fine. If you do get hit by a physical move, then. You know, you just get 130 base speed, like you have your like Salak Berry up with a belly drum and you just start sweeping. But yeah, it's definitely not a consistent pick, but it's, it's definitely not an unknown. That's all I have to say about it, really. Uh, Electrode, like, I, I don't know what it is with Electrode just getting one screen instead of two every single generation. Apparently, it had both screens in Gen 7, which I can recall, but it only has light screen again this generation. I'm just like, damn. Electro could have actually been a decent dual screen set and now it just has more ground to compete with and you know other than that Electro offers nothing to the table so yeah that's quite unfortunate um yeah I'm gonna have to make a new box now because I you know filled out that one but yeah Electro I have no expectations for as usual um onto the F's now we have um Phalanx now Phalanx you know is probably one of the biggest you know like it gets the biggest advantage from terrestrialization because you know phalanx's issue with no retreat sets was that like it had coverage to hit the things like would but it just didn't hit hard enough and then you know just either got revenge killed or got burnt or something but now that has terror in its uh move pool now you could like go terror like ghost or terror blast to you know be the ghost types you still have cc and you still have like rock slide to hit fighting types i mean not fighting types flying types or you know stuff like that or even go poison jab to hit fairies but again like we have like no fairies so what's the point at this point uh but yeah i think phalanx is gonna be decent enough fighting type it's just that the competition is kind of heavy because you do have phalanx in this tier you do have persimian like you have a you have like these guys other than like abominable every one of these fighting types are you know good slash decent picks and you know phalanx uh like it, it has a different role than these guys to be honest and i think it can fulfill that role pretty pretty well to be honest if you support it decently enough um cool for a giraffe um hmm. interesting pokemon i'll say like its speed is kind of bad its defenses are decent enough and uh you know it has good coverage but i, I don't know like is this one good like you have a decent amount of psychic types in terms of like special psychic types like you have indeed female you have a uh, rapscar even or a career psychic i think that could pull off something interesting but the other ones are just better in general but yeah is this thing better than something like grumpig potentially like you do have sap sipper for grass immunity you do have decent bulk i i think it'll be fine i think it'll be fine don't know if it's any pokemon but i think it'll be fine Honestly, it's not the worst thing you can run. Uh, Flapple, I think Flapple is heavily underrated right now just because of Terra potential. Like, this thing hits incredibly hard. All you, all you really need is like Terra Fire, 
uh, grab apple outrage and then like terror blast fire and this thing kind of just destroys everything it's a shame though because like you probably want to be fitting uh you know sucker punch somewhere but like you could probably just go like banded or life orb or something or even trailblaze but like dropping grab apple though for breaking potential i don't know like if you really don't need the defense drop from grab apple i would suggest just like a trailblaze uh you know life orb uh you know outrage then terror blast fire or something like that but yeah it's just that four moonsault syndrome is annoying on this but it does break very hard and it's like one of three dragons in the tier and i think it does hit incredibly hard with fast with dd so i would underestimate this pokemon not gonna lie and also missing is annoying but what can you do that you have you have to trade in something for massive power you know um flareon um uh, i think flareon's actually gonna be good because you can actually run flame orb with terrestrialization uh, because obviously Flareon's issue with gut sets in the lower tiers was that it was forced to run toxical because fire types can't be burned obviously so having terra potential normal uh, obviously a normal type can be burned by flame orb so you don't have to you know die in three turns to uh you know uh toxical so you can go facade you have quick attack uh you do have uh flare blitz obviously as your stab and then uh i think this thing lost superpower everything lost superpower well, I suppose you just go Trailblaze last and, uh, you know, this one can actually be pretty cool. Like, I mean, seeing that there's a lot of Guts Pokemon in this tier and all of them have, like, potential to be really good Pokemon. It's just depending on, uh, like, what they have and some are just better than others. Like, Luxray seems more appealing than Flareon just because it's fast and has agility, so it doesn't have to run Trailblaze. And, oh, but, like, Flareon does hit harder than Luxray, so, you know... It's tough to say, but I think Farron will be decent. All the Guts Pokemon are good Pokemon. Like, in terms of breaking power, they're, they're all strong. They're, they're all quite strong. Frostmoth, probably one of the biggest, you know, benefactors of Terra. Like, getting rid of one of the worst defensive types in the game. Terra Ground, uh, Frostmoth with QD. Kind of just beats everything that used to check it, you know. You Terra Blast Ground, you beat the Steel types. You still have Ice and Bug Stab. And, uh, you know, it, it just hits hard, like... All you need is ice ground coverage. You don't even need like bug buzz necessarily. You could just go roost. Oh, it lost. Oh, wait, did this thing ever have roost? I don't think it did, actually. Or oh, I, I don't really recall, to be honest. But since you have no reliable recovery, I guess you just go bug buzz then. And yeah, there's a frost morph. I think this one's pretty good. It's definitely strong, uh, especially with terror potential, terror ground. Like, because you check, you beat fire with terror. Like, frost morph is insane, bro. Like, this one's going to be good. This one's going to be good as hell. I'm not going to lie. Um cool uh fracture i want to talk about fracture another nft dragon type mold breaker i don't know how much mold breaker is going to come into play here but at the same time you know it's still a dd mon that hits hard terra potential with steel like kind of what haxorus did in ru now it's not to that same extent because you know uh, it doesn't hit nearly as hard as frac uh, as haxorus and doesn't have the speed tier but i just wanted to mention fracture because i think it could be a decent pick but i'll probably go dragon in and you uh then fracture and then fracture probably makes it to pu again where it'll probably be a really good pokemon uh frogadier next as well another nfe i wanted to talk about don't know if this one stays in uh probably drops the pu too i think the water competition is too much but at the same time it still has a decent speed tier has protein can hit relatively hard, I suppose, with like aspect set. Like, it can hit hard, but why not just use like claw it or uh, something like that? But scarf is decent. I don't know. I think it's just slightly too weak to work in a new, but it's just something I wanted to mention in case anyone like mentioned, you know, Frogadier in the comment section. Uh, Glaceon next. And um, yeah, I think Glaceon as well. Choice Specs hits incredibly hard. Uh, obviously can run terra options like terra ground to obviously hit steel types and uh, fire types were super effective like you did have water pulse but water pulse does not hit anything at all really uh but yeah i mean water pulse is just too weak anyway but yeah specs Glacion, definitely one of the most threatening special breakers in the tier you do have freeze dry and ice beam as moves uh also have shadow ball for good coverage and then you can just go terra blast last with a uh, terra blast potential you also have cm glacion as well which could potentially just run like max hp max defense and go like a decent like defensive terror option to get rid of the you know weaknesses that ice has and you know rocks weakness i, I think glacion's gonna be pretty decent like especially that cm set i'll i'll be very hard pressed to see a pokemon that can actually break this reliably like it does have wish too so you could just go like uh cm cm freeze dry over ice beam just because freeze dry hits water types will super effective damage you could go wish 
um, and then like Terra Blast last or like Protect or you know Shadow Ball. It depends on what you want to be honest. Well, yeah, the is going to be a decent. It's going to be a good boat one. If it drops a PU, you'll be very strong. I'm not gonna lie, it'll be very strong. Uh, I want to talk about Gabite quickly as well. Another Dragon NFE. Probably not one you'd want to use, but it still has every light. It does have spikes. Um, I'm pretty sure this got. Oh, it does have spikes. Only Garchomp got spikes. Ooh. Okay, that's a shame. But uh, still a decently defensive rocker. It does have SD. I, I don't think offensive Gabite is gonna be doing much, but it does have rocks. But if it had spikes, I'd be, you know condoning this a bit more but just having just rocks I, I don't know we do have a good amount of rockers that goodbye doesn't really need to be used which is quite a shame unfortunately uh glalie glalie's like a spiker doesn't really do anything other than that like it's worse glacian worse frost moth like i don't see glalie doing anything in this tier unfortunately it'll probably de be decent in pu but uh not in nu unfortunately i don't think it makes it to nu um cool go go like we have a few grass we have we have few grass pokemon in this tier and uh go go i don't know it, it does have leech seed it does have recovery it can i wouldn't even say it hits kind of hard but i just think like it's a decently defensive grass type where in a tier where we don't really have too many of those with like water types running all over the place so in theory you could say go go might be decent but it depends on if the player base really sees that something that will get used I'm not gonna lie because it's still go go at the end of the day like it's not that good it's never really historically been that good of a pokemon in any so you know the stuff like that um hmm how, how long has this video been going on we've been going on for quite a bit i, I don't want to make it too long obviously but you know we have a lot of pokemon to discuss anyway so if you guys are still along for the ride i appreciate it but yeah golduck if you want to try and go manual rain, I suppose Golduck is a decent option. Uh, it's probably a strong option, to be honest, if you go in, like, manual rain. I don't know what rain setters we have, or if, even if we have, like, pranks to Pokemon to, you know, work with it. But, like, in previous generations, let's say if we had Volbeat, then, you know, I would be singing praises. But the only, like, pranks to rain dance Pokemon we have is, like, Micro, which is actually decent enough, to be fair. But, you know... Like, other than in rain, I think Golduck is like a pretty average Pokemon. To be fair, like the water competition's a bit too much. You know, Clawwitzer breaks better. You know, Bruxish and uh, Basculin are faster Pokemon, you know. So, yeah, it's a shame, really. But, uh, yeah, the only issue I see Golduck having is rain. Outside of that, it's just kind of average. So, you know, it's a shame. Uh, Gudra. Goddamn, I want to Gudra already. <laughs> yeah, one of the best Pokemon in NU by a long shot uh hits incredibly hard with specs uh you know has a decent speed to great special bulk by the way incredible special bulk uh you know for gudra so it can handle a lot of these special sweepers that are you know running around or Kario, lilligan venomoth the grass immunity is also pretty solid for you know the latitude i just i just mentioned because their main way of setting up is you know sleep powder and gudra can obviously just come in on that like 100 percent of the time so yeah Gudra, I think Gudra will have a decent amount of sets that can work. Obviously, choice specs is everything, everyone that is the set that everyone is talking about right now because, you know, we have a lack of steals and we have a lack of fairy types and Joker Meteor Fire Blast coverage is just, like, you know, solid in general. And you also have pretty solid, uh, you know, coverage options, whether that will be Hydro Pump, Ice Beam, T-Bolt, Sludge Bomb, uh... All of those moves and Gujo is a pretty solid Pokemon. I also think Assault Vest is decent as well, just to you know handle those setup sweepers on the special side a lot easier as well. I think that'll be pretty good. But yeah, Gujo is definitely a top five Pokemon in the meta for sure. Don't know if it ends up getting banned or not. Like it might be a bit too hard to handle defensively, but uh, you know there's still Terra options. But Gujo can Terra itself. You know Terra into Steel type. Not really care about Fairy types and still just hit the you know fairy type with even like sludge bomb with the terror type uh like if they tear into a fairy type we'll just you know start clicking like other coverage options but yeah Gujo's freaking good Gujo is very good um onto Gothitel again like all of these you know pu psychics or like even zu psychics that you know we've seen across like the last you know three generations or so i'm just like Gothitel has never really done anything of notes really like it's always been outclassed and with like competition like Grumpig, which you know offers a lot more defensive utility because of its ability thick fat or even something like like if i get to gothitelle or like monster like oranguru like 
don't expect me to be singing their high praises because these mons are just kind of bad. Like, they're not good Pokemon to really use, to be fair. So, I don't want to spend too much time on them, to be honest. Um, cool. We're on to Greedon. This is going to be a PU Pokemon, no doubt about it. Um, it does have, like, stuffed cheeks, you know, body press, a lot of that stuff. Also, have Last Resort, which I find to be pretty funny because, you know, you could potentially use this one like, Trick Room or something. And, uh, you know, it could do that. But, yeah, Greedon is not going to be a new Pokemon one. Let's, let's move on. Uh, on to Grumpig. Now, is Grumpig going to stay NU? Who knows? Like, I think the utility that it offers, you know, has T-Wave. It has, uh, you know, Trick. Could actually be a decent Scarfer. You know, it can reliably check the fighting types kind of well. Like, if you go, like, an offensive, uh, you know, Scarf set. Because you hit Pissimian with Psychic. You hit Medicham with, like, Psychic as well. It's not weak to Psychic, but it's not like you can necessarily Oko Grumping because you kind of have to just click, like, the coverage option, uh, which is either, like, Ice Punch or, like, Terror Blast. But if they go, like, Terror Blast Ghost or something, then, yeah, Grumping gets cooked. But <laughs> other than that, I think it's a decent check to the fighting types. Um, but, yeah, uh, whether or not it will be too good we'll have to see him but yeah I, I don't think it's bad by any means um gum shoes uh yeah this is another pu goon i'm not gonna lie it's too slow uh you know zangus is in this tier uh yeah that, that's all that needs to be said even squawker billy is in this tier uh yeah gum shoes is not doing anything it's just a pu goon um cool we have i'm going to talk about hatram now just before we go on to hunch crow but yeah hatram the only magic bounce user legal in NU right now and Hatram was a decent pick in early gen PU just because magic bounce with all these hazards going around and Hatram you know being able to you know just bounce them back into the opposing uh, field like it's pretty good it also has like decent bulk and it still kept all of its you know options that made it like good in like the last gen in the first place like mystical fire to hit steel types it has nuzzle you know so it's not necessarily taunt bait or like t-wave it has like psychic and yeah hatram is pretty good honestly all things considered and uh yeah but the bulk is good enough for it to work to you with every light so yeah hatram is definitely going to be nu i think i don't think pu i don't think it drops a pu just because magic bounce is that good so yeah Onto no wait, even before Hunch Crow. Nah, uh Haunter actually. Haunter. Now Haunter is definitely gonna be NU somewhere or another, and if no one uses it, it gets banned from PU for sure. Because it has nasty plot now. Now Haunter missed out on nasty plot last gen, which would have made it insane. Even more insane than it is now. Because power creep has hit Haunter now slightly, just because everything can tear and the overall power level has like gotten like it is increased the power level always increases as the next generation comes along so nasty plot haunter like shadow ball sludge bomb uh terror blast fighting boom this one this one's good <laughs> this one's insane you could even go every light even you don't need any like boosting item you might as well make haunters zero bulk like 0 0.5 bulk or even like one bulk because like you know ghost poison is still a decent defensive typing like you have some useful resistances you know normal immunity bug resistance grass resistance you might as well just slap a heavier light on this thing haunter is also just faster than a lot of the setup sweepers too so being able to you know nasty put on just nuke those things too is going to be pretty good now i don't know how strong haunter is going to be but it's going to be pretty strong if it has nasty put on the lie hunch crow on the other hand hunch crow is also going to be pretty solid too a lot of people are saying hunch crow is potentially broken now i don't know if it's broken or not like again like it's only 24 hours in i can only really theory more than like you know speculate the brokenness of certain pokemon but you know hunch Ghost still has brave bird it gave u-turn this generation which is kind of big for it i'm not gonna lie hunch Crow having u-turn makes scarf sets a lot stronger now like the speed tier obviously isn't too great for scarf like you have base 80 scarfers which would just cook hunch Crow in general but at the same time let's say like, there isn't any base 80 Scarfers on the opposing team. Honchko goes in ham. Like, I said, all a mon really needs to be a decent Scarf is pivoting options. And Honchko finally has that now. So, Scarf sets are definitely going to be a lot stronger. Um, in terms of mixed Honchko sets, like, obviously, you have Heat Wave to hit Steel types. And it actually does have a decent, you know, special attack stat. It's a shame it lost Super Power, though. Because Super Power would have been so good on this. But, yeah, Heat Wave will just have to do, I suppose. But, yeah. Sucker Punch, Heat Wave. This is pretty much mixed Honchko in a bag. 
Does this have Defog? Oh, I lost the Defog, that's a shame. Uh, yeah, Defog Conscript would have been cool. I'm not gonna lie, would have been cool. Uh, what else? We're almost done with this part of the video. But uh, yeah, let's talk about Houndoom now. Houndoom has some competition as a fire type. Like, we haven't really mentioned too many fire types because there isn't really that many. Like, you have Karko, Crocolo, but they're more like defensive Pokemon. But in terms of the fire options that we have, Obviously, I mentioned Flareon, which is a physical mon, so it's not really competing with Houndoom. It's more Pyro that's competing with Houndoom, because Pyro has normal fire, which is worse than Dark Fire, to be fair, but Houndoom is a lot slower than Pyro. Like, Houndoom is slower than things like Basculin. So, uh, it's faster than Bruxish and, you know, where a career falls, but being slower than something like Basculin is still... What is Houndoom actually slower than? Let's take a, a little look quickly, okay? Let's see, let's see. So... 95 like you're sharing that with Leafeon and like it is the second fastest of the mons that like you know Basculin reigns over but you know Pyro being faster than Basculin, Tauros, Zorak, you know Slacking and everything else that's under them like the competition is, is rough but you still have Nasty Plot to differentiate yourself you're still somewhat speedy and uh you know yeah you have good uh, coverage options too you your dual stab is incredible and you have sludge bomb to you know help that out a lot so yeah if how is hounding gonna be good i think it's gonna be good like i think it's a decent breaker but again it is competing with pyro in that breaking slot to be honest and pyro speed tier really comes into clutch a lot more so yeah hypno cool remember the gothitelle situation guys you know zu psychics uh hypno is one of those guys now, if Hypno had Wish, if Hypno kept like Wish somewhere in its move set, then yeah, I, I would rate Hypno a lot more. Actually, I would rate it a lot, lot, lot more. But uh, yeah, it, it's just a do nothing mon. Like, what does Hypno offer with a Grand Pig? That's that's the question that you have to be keep asking yourself with all these defensive psychics in uh, NU and PU. What does this offer with a Grand Pig? If it's nothing, then there's not much else to this conversation i suppose encore i guess but that, that's it that's literally just it and um indeedy now this is a psychic that actually has a role because you know psychic terrain it actually has a role you know is actually better than grumping this is probably the best psychic in the tier uh that you know isn't like bruxish or whatever so you have side shock you have psychic you have psychic seeds shenanigans that obviously kind of like work with like mons like Driftlim or whatnot but yeah it's not it's not the male version so you do hit slightly uh weaker and you're also slightly slower but it's still a decent you know speed tier you still decently hit hard especially on the psychic terrain like all you need is like spec side shock you're cooking everything bro well what's chanty doing chanty's not doing anything so yeah there's things like that you have good coverage options too i, I indeed he's gonna be a good pokemon you have psychic terrain bro like that's all you really need um jolteon jolteon's not on one guys because it has terror eyes it has terror eyes this one's actually gonna be good so um Jolteon's typically a meme you know like it was are you like gen 6 you know Jolteon was like the biggest meme in gen 6 are you alongside like ambipom and that but now Jolteon actually has coverage terra blast shadow ball volt switch this is all it needs and it's actually pretty freaking strong so obviously terra ice gets you stabbed it actually does hit hard on the choice specs can to cure things like gudra cooks all the ground type pokemon in the tier Jolteon is amazing I'm not gonna lie, this is like the first time where Jolteon is actually, you know, like a solid pick. Like, it's definitely like the fastest Pokemon in the tier. So, you know, Jolteon's gonna be pretty darn good. Uh, and Jumpluff is the last Pokemon we're gonna talk about in today's video. And a lot of people have been talking about Jumpluff because, you know, it has terror potential with uh, SD Acrobatics. Now, Jumpluff's biggest issue is that, you know, that base 55 attack stat is still so weak after a Swords Dance, but. Given it a ad adaptability boost with acrobatics makes this one very very good. I'm not gonna lie. Now obviously it struggles to hit you know steel types, but just trap the steel types. Just get rid of the steel types because I don't want to be running Terra Fire on this Pokemon. Like I want to go Terra Flying Acrobatics. So acrobatics gets to you know it doubles from 55, which is 110, and then it doubles from you know 110 to 220 like i want to be running 220 base power acrobatics bro and then obviously you have sleep powder the speed tier is also pretty solid to 110 is faster than a lot in this tier like the only thing really faster than this is obviously jolteon which cooks this uh with like terror ice uh terror blast or even just uh you know t-bolt uh from like if it's chipped and then obviously things like sneasel which i'll talk about in like 
the remaining remaining parts that I'm gonna you know upload to the channel. But yeah, that is it for the first part of discussing every single Pokemon in Skyline Violet and you. If you guys did enjoy this video, please leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel for more content. And if you guys are enjoying NU so far, let me know down below in the comment section. And also let me know what your favorite Pokemon to use in NU is so far. Uh definitely mine is masculine because masculine, you know, hits very, very hard. So yeah. Thanks for watching this video again, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.